this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello. Maya is such a rich program that you might think you can do basically everything in animation with it. For example, down here you have the timeline and you can load a sound into the timeline. For example, music or lip sync speech, which you need to lip sync here in with your character. We have one light, we have one camera, we have a character and we have a flat plane. She's one of the general editors content browser one of the characters here and i gave her a well one of these fbx files here where she walks and stands i don't remember which one it is but you can always relocate them by going to rigging and then skeleton and human ak so here you see the character where, where you could actually manual manually animate her but i just used the run stand one fbx file which is in the content browser and i used her she comes from the render people and is built into maya so she's reachable via the content browser as well so um, you just choose a character and then you choose a source so uh, in other cases she would just stand around or run longer but here sh she just walks a few steps and then she stands still as you see, the only lamp in the scene is not moving, it's a spotlight, but the camera is, the camera is slowly moving away and going higher up. It's a very s uh, subtle movement of the camera, really, uh, as you will see in the final rendering. The rendering goes like this, and I just want to remind you how this goes. Common, um, in the common tab, you give the animation a name. She walks on green, that's the name I gave. The image format is my favorite is PNG in this case because I can put it, put the single frames which are being rendered together easily in any kind of software. I use Shotcut which is open source. Here I need to choose name, number and extension because the extension needs to be last. And then this section opens here. It uh, It is dimmed out uh, if you render just single frame. And I render 90 frames which is more or less 3 seconds. And um, other than that on a renderer I chose the uh, anti-aliasing setting of 7 which is quite high and I used my GPU in this case which uh, is not actually necessary it's not a heavy scene anyway I'm rendering the perspective uh, camera here which is not this one it's a perspective one I'll show you in a second and I'm rendering the scene in 1080 and this is the camera I'm actually rendering this one and the scene looks like this you see the camera slightly moving away that's basically all. She stands still here and it's interesting uh, to see the light. I started the scene with an Arnold Skydome light and when you render this view here it takes a second until the graphics card puts together all the information especially about this, this texture. Well, I'll talk about the texture a little bit later. So this is the scene we're rendering the perspective view here and you see everything is too bright. I dimmed the Skydome light and finally I deleted it like I'm deleting it now because I have this fantastic little light here and she steps into the scene so when I render it now it looks like this which is already very nice and when I change the rendering camera here to the perspective one I see this rendering. What I also did in the render settings, I need to go to Arnold for that, I uh, activated motion blur. It's a very, very subtle effect, but since she moves quite fast in this range here, uh, the it's, it's a subtle and good aspect because you're so much used to motion blur from real film. And actually Arnold renders the shadow with the motion blur as well. So it's a very precise rendering.
here we go. This is quite a, it's not finished rendering, but actually it is five seconds. And uh, here you see a massive motion blur, which you don't see that strong from the, from the distance where we render it. But here you see the motion blur is in the shadow as well. So this is actually quite a nice view as well, but uh, you have to finally decide about what kind of view you're uh, looking for when you do the rendering task. And here she just steps into the light. Down back here it's very dark. And uh, then she ends up in the light. And here the animation stops. Now she comes textured and with this animation basically, so I didn't have to do much about her other than apart from scaling her down because she arrives in the scene quite huge. But uh, this object here is quite interesting. It's a flat plane, but I mapped it with a bump uh, and displacement map coming from another program. And I want to advise you to use materials from complex materials, which basically Maya is not able to do. This is not a file texture. It's a complex texture, which comes, in my case, from Substance Alchemist. Here you see one of the versions I tried out. And uh, when I map this to, say, a, a sphere, it looks like this. Uh, the transparency is not uh, does not matter here. I filled everything with green here. But uh, Alchemist is one of the programs where you can create very rich textures. And here I see what kind of layers I had. I imported a base material, which is basically imported image from Max Ernst painting. And then I added other effects here, like the color variation. If I deactivate this, it goes back to green. And when I deactivate the corrosion, I get the, the real, more or less, uh, the, the, the leaves here plus something from that Max Ernst painting. So basically I'm playing around with textures in order to get a nice texture here, which I applied here. I did one or two tutorials about how to apply Substance Alchemist textures, uh, how to import them into Maya. It's a very simple process and it's very rewarding. So that's where it comes from. Here in the viewport, it doesn't look that sexy, but it actually looks brilliant in the rendering. Next thing I want to talk about is this. I needed some steps and steps on high heels would be ideal on marble. Excellent. And I found by Differentiel, uh, who recorded this with an M audio micro track in 24 and 96 bits here, uh, he recorded this walk. And it took me quite a while to find it, find something appropriate, because, for example, steps in high heels, for example, is in a room. And that's not the atmosphere I wanted to con be conveyed in my animation here. High, high heels here. It sounds like in a staircase. That's not uh, something I wanted either. So I finally found this. Here I have far too many steps because my animation is only three seconds long, so nobody's walking that long. But I downloaded it from freesound.org. I just cut out five steps, I think. Have a look here. This is the animation rendered. And these are the five steps which I copied. You can now move them back. It's a little bit better, as you can see. Much better. But she moves, she walks a little bit faster than these steps here are. It would be a pure coincidence if this would work together uh, perfectly. That's why I cut the steps up. And uh, here I have uh, one, two, three, four steps, because she actually does four steps. And uh, now I adjusted them so they fit nicely. 
So what do we take away from this? Use as many tools as you can and as you need for something like this. Find footsteps and apply them to the animation. In some cases, you get a sound file, which you need to load into this timeline here. Actually, you can drag and drop it in here. And then create an animation which is absolutely synchronized with that sound. So the sound is the master. It uh, comes from somewhere else, from somebody else, and you have to adjust your animation to that sound. For example, the length of the steps, you might have to lip sync the creature, so she starts talking, or whatever. And with this, I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.